This video is brought to you by Ground News. Today, Israel suffers international backlash following the killing of aid workers. Georgia reintroduces its controversial foreign agents law, and the US wants to create a time zone for the moon. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 4th of April 2024. World leaders are demanding answers this week after an Israeli airstrike killed seven aid workers in Gaza on Monday, despite the convoy having coordinated its movements with the Israeli military. The humanitarian workers from the World Central Kitchen charity were hit whilst travelling in clearly marked aid vehicles shortly after overseeing the unloading of 100 tonnes of food brought to Gaza by sea. The charity's founder, Jose Andreas, said the Israeli attack had targeted them systematically, car by car, while Israel describes the killings as unintentional and a tragic incident. The governments of the countries whose citizens were killed, including three from the UK, a US-Canadian dual citizen, an Australian, a Pole and a Palestinian, have condemned the strike and urged an investigation. Meanwhile, they're also facing growing political pressure to stop selling weapons to Israel. In Britain, more than 600 lawyers, academics and retired senior judges have written to Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, setting out concerns that the UK government was at risk of breaching international law, while the Scottish National Party is calling for Parliament to be recalled from its Easter break, so the issue can be debated. The Labour Party says the UK government should publish any legal advice it's had regarding whether Israel is breaching international law, and suspend arms sales if there's a risk of a serious breach of international humanitarian law. The killing of the aid workers has also stained Israel's relationship with Poland, with Poland's deputy foreign minister summoning the Israeli envoy to discuss the new situation in Polish-Israeli relations, as well as moral, political and financial responsibility for recent events in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, Australia's Prime Minister slammed Israel's explanation for the strike as not good enough. Over in the US, though, the Biden administration has doubled down on its arms transfers to Israel, saying Israel's right to self-defence is a long-term commitment of the US. The White House spokesperson John Kirby told reporters on Wednesday that the US has not found any incidents of Israel violating international humanitarian law in the six months of the war, despite 196 aid workers having been killed in Gaza so far. Meanwhile, the US Defense Secretary has warned of the dangers of Israel's planned invasion of Rafa, where more than a million civilians are taking refuge. US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the deaths of the aid workers reinforced the expressed concern over a potential Israeli military operation in Rafa, specifically focusing on the need to ensure the evacuation of Palestinian citizens and the flow of humanitarian aid. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Today, Georgia faces one of the first of its many hurdles towards EU accession, as the ruling party announced yesterday the reintroduction of the Russian-style foreign agent law. The controversial law would require NGOs to disclose their sources of funding, essentially branding charities, pressure groups and opposition media outlets as agents of foreign influence. It resembles similar legislation used by Moscow to crack down on the opposition. In a statement released today, the EU condemned the reintroduction of the law, warning that ensuring media freedom is critical to EU accession and is at the core of democracy. The Georgian Dream ruling party added a statement on Facebook yesterday that NGOs are involved in the dissemination of pseudo-liberal ideology and so-called LGBT propaganda, as well as in campaigns that aim to undermine public trust in the Georgian Orthodox Church. Now, this law was actually proposed around this time last year, but was forced to unconditionally withdraw the proposal amid massive public outcry and huge street protests in Tbilisi. So which alterations have been made to the law since? Well, not many. In fact, the revised law will retain the exact same text, threatening imprisonment for up to five years, except that the term foreign agents is now replaced by organisations pursuing the interests of a foreign power. Opposition groups have vowed to fight against this law, calling it a war on the Western community. Moving back to Israel now, where reports have suggested that the Israeli Defense Forces have used AI in order to identify targets in the ongoing war. 
The Israel-Palestine publication, Plus 972 magazine, working with the Hebrew language local call outlet, specifically claimed that Israel was using an artificial intelligence-based piece of software called Lavender in order to identify targets for missile strikes. Lavender was developed by the IDF's elite intelligence division known as Unit 8200, which is similar to the UK's GCHQ or the US's National Security Agency. The authors claim that Israel used the software frequently, especially at the start of the war, and that its outputs about Hamas targets were treated by military leaders as if it were a human decision. This was possible thanks to a decision by the military early in the war to give officers automatic approval to adopt the lavender kill lists. As part of this, officers were not required to check the decisions made by the software. In addition to this, intelligence sources have claimed that, early in the war, Israel used dumb bombs bombs which are unguided and generally destroy entire homes rather than just individuals, to act on Lavender's recommendations, as it's cheaper and they didn't want to waste expensive bombs on unimportant people. For their part, the IDF did respond to these claims, stating that the IDF does not use an artificial intelligence system that identifies terrorist operatives or tries to predict whether a person is a terrorist. They added that information systems are merely tools for analysts in the target identification process, and that the system referred to in the report is simply a database whose purpose is to cross-reference intelligence sources in order to produce up-to-date layers of information on the military operatives of terrorist organisations. This is not a list of confirmed military operatives eligible to attack. Moving now to some space news. The White House has recently stated that it believes that the Moon should have its own time zone, referred to as Coordinated Lunar Time or LTC. One of the reasons behind the need for this is that, due to a different gravitational field strength on the Moon, time moves quicker. Specifically, each day time moves 58.7 microseconds quicker on the Moon, meaning that if a clock on Earth was placed on the Moon today, it would be running one second faster in 50 years than on Earth. Now, this might not sound like a lot, but when space agencies are trying to plan a moon landing, this time difference becomes very important. And, well, in the next few years, there are a number of potential moon landings planned. The most notable of which is Artemis 3, which should see humans step foot on the moon again in 2026. And finally, we end on the uplifting news that the TLDR daily briefing is today two years old. Now, while it's our two-year anniversary of the Daily Briefing today, we've actually got some pretty big, exciting news coming for the channel on Monday. So make sure you check out the Daily Briefing then to find out what it is. Over the last couple of years, the Daily Briefing has changed hugely. We've got three new amazing writers who work on it every day. We've got new hosts, new graphics, and a new larger audience. We'd just like to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who watches the Daily Briefing, who's left feedback, or who's recommended it to others. It's you guys that have helped us to grow to what we are today. So let's just hope that our corporate paymaster Jack continues to fund us for yet another year. Now, when researching the story about Israel using AI to select bombing targets, we found that it was really important to balance the different opinions on this topic. Fortunately, we were able to easily compare opinions thanks to our sponsor Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of all the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. For example, take this story about the Palestinian Authority wanting a vote on UN membership in April. Right away, you can see that this story had 37 outlets reporting on it. Of these 37 outlets, 12% lean left, while 19% lean right. Every story also comes with a detailed view of the bias distribution, factuality scores, and even specific ownership information. You can also swipe through some of the headlines to get a more detailed understanding of how reporting might change based on political bias. I especially like their blind spot feed, which shows you stories underreported by either side of the political spectrum. Ground News is such a useful tool for our current media landscape, and I cannot recommend it enough. I've become much better at spotting political bias, and I've surprisingly challenged some of my own views. In fact, if you subscribe today, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan. 
That's $5 a month for unlimited access to every incredible Ground News feature. This offer is only available here, so make sure you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.